Value chain analysis is a good way to figure out how to give the most value to your customers. In business, we get paid to turn raw materials into something that other people want or need. We call this adding value. This is easy to see in manufacturing, where a company adds value by taking a raw material, like wood pulp, that the end user doesn't need and turning it into something that people are willing to pay money for, egg paper. But this idea is just as important in service industries, where people use their time, knowledge, equipment, and systems to create services that customers really value. Now this is very important. In most cases, the more value you create, the more people will be willing to pay a good price for your product or service, and the more they will keep buying from you. If you add a lot of value to your team, you will do well at what you do on a personal level. Then you should expect to be paid for what you've done. So how do you find out where you, your team, or your business can make a difference? This can be done with the Value Chain Analysis tool. Value Chain Analysis helps you figure out how you create value for your customers and how to make the most of that value, whether it's through great products, great services, or good work. Value Chain Analysis has three steps. Activity Analysis First, you make a list of all the things you do to make your product or service happen. Second, you think about what you could do for each activity that would give your customer the most value. Taking stock and making plans. Third, you decide if it's worth it to make changes, and then you make plans for what to do. We do the following one by one. One. What's happening? The first step is to think about everything you, your team, or your business does that affects your customers in some way. On an organizational level, this means the step-by-step -step business processes you use to serve the customer. These will include marketing your products or services, sales and taking orders, operational processes, delivery, support, and so on. This may also involve many other steps or processes specific to your industry. It means how you do your work step-by-step -step as an individual or as a team. But this will be related to other things as well. As an example, how to make sure the people you hire do the best job possible. How to get yourself or others to do their best. How you keep up with the latest and best techniques. How you pick and make the technologies that give you a competitive edge. How your customers tell you how you're doing and what you can do to improve. Write down the things that will help your business once you've thought of them. 2. Value Analysis Now for each activity you've chosen, write down its value factors. These are the things that your customers like about how each task is done. For example, if you're thinking of a way to take orders over the phone, your customers will appreciate a quick answer to their call, courtesy, an efficient way to take order details, quick answers to questions from someone who knows what they're talking about, and a quick and efficient way to solve any problems that come up. If you're offering a professional service, your customer will probably appreciate a solution that is correct and accurate, based on the most up-to-date information, easy to understand, etc. Write these value factors next to each of the activities you've thought of. Write next to each one what needs to be done or changed to give each value factor a lot of value. 3. Look for changes and come up with a plan. When you finish your value analysis, you'll probably be ready to move forward. You'll have thought of many ways to give your customers more value. And if you could do all of these things, it might be a good sign that your service is good. Be careful though, because at this point, it's easy to waste your time on a hundred different things and not finish any of them. So first, go for some of the quick, easy, and cheap wins. This will do a lot to make your team feel better. Then try the more difficult changes. Some of them might not help. Some people will only make small changes, but they will cost a lot. This is wrong. Then put the remaining tasks in order of how important they are and make a step-by-step -step plan for how to do them that is both doable and keeps your team motivated. Example. At the software house where she works, Lakshmi is in charge of making new software. Small changes to software are made by her team for many clients. As part of a team building day, they use value chain analysis to figure out how to give their clients the best service possible. During the activity analysis part of the session, they find the following activities that are helpful to clients. Taking orders, improvements to be made, programmer testing scheduling software for building, the next test, 
Delivery backslash support. Lakshmi also says that the following things are important, even though they don't have to do with clients. Recruitment is the process of choosing people who will work well with the team. Training means helping new team members get up to speed as quickly as possible and helping current team members learn about new software, techniques, and technologies as they come out. Next, she and her team work on the order-taking process and figure out which parts of this process will give customers the most value. They have a list of the following value factors. When people call, getting back to them quickly. Knowing the customer's business, situation, and system well so they don't waste the customer's time with explanations that aren't needed. Getting a clear picture of what the customer wants by asking the right questions. Telling the customer how the development process works and managing their expectations about when the product will probably be ready.